Hey guys, so today I'm going to do a different type of video and I'm going to cover a conceptual concept in rotational dynamics. And what I'm going to cover is what friction force acts on a ball rolling without fr slipping on a horizontal surface. And the reason why I decided to make this video is I remember when I was first learning rotational dynamics, this exact question popped into my mind and I couldn't really wrap my head around it. And I watched dozens of YouTube videos, but nobody really explained this type of, this exact question as directly as I wanted it to be explained. Okay, so before we jump into this question, we need to understand what does rolling without slipping really mean? Well, as the name implies, the ball does not slip relative to the surface. And what that means is that the bottom of the ball has zero velocity relative to the surface, or it does not move. So how can it be that the ball is rolling in some direction, but the bottom of the ball has zero velocity? Well, to understand that, we need to split up the ball's motion into translational and rotational components. So first, let's look at a translational or linear component. Well, the ball is just going to be moving to the right. So, its translational velocity is going to be to the right. The bottom of the ball is going to be to the right, top of the ball is going to the right, and to the middle of the ball is going to be to the right. Well, that's simple enough. And let's look at the rotational component. And this is actually pretty simple. So, you can imagine a ball that's rotating over this axis, in this direction. And the top of the ball is going to be moving to the right with some velocity. And the bottom of the ball is going to be moving to the left with some velocity. And all that rolling without slipping means is that this bottom component to the left in rotation has the same magnitude as the component to the right in translation. So, when you add up the velocities in the bottom, it will have zero velocity. And another interesting fact about rolling without slipping is that this means that the top of the ball will have twice the velocity as the middle of the ball. And I'll let you understand that for yourself. Okay, so it's really a criteria that the bottom of the ball in the rotation has the same velocity to the left as the, ball, as the bottom of the ball in the translational velocity has to the right. Okay, so now let's tackle the question. And to tackle this, imagine you have some ball and you throw it on some surface very, very quickly at a thousand miles per hour. Well, the second it touches the surface, it's going to be sliding along it. And it's going to have a lot of linear velocity to the right. And when something is sliding along the surface, you can imagine a block or anything, there's going to be friction that acts in the opposite direction of its motion. So, there's going to be specifically kinetic friction. Because this bottom of the ball, it's not rolling without slipping yet. You've just thrown it, and it's sliding across the surface. Okay, so what will the kinetic friction do? Well, this kinetic friction is going to be the only force in the horizontal direction that acts on the ball. So, because F equals ma, the ball will have some acceleration in the opposite direction of its motion. So, its linear velocity will start to decrease. And, so, and because of the same thing, that the kinetic friction is the only force in this direction, it's also the only force that does torque on the ball. And this torque is going to make it angularly accelerate. So as time goes on, its angular velocity will increase, and its linear velocity will decrease. And you can imagine that this will continue happening until this criteria is met. And the rotational velocity has increased enough, and the translational velocity has decreased enough, that they're the same. It's like, in the bottom of the ball, the, velocity was can the velocities will cancel out. And because you're not throwing a ball at 1,000 miles per hour, and when in reality you're throwing a ball at like 2 or 3 miles an hour, this criteria will happen pretty quickly. So after a short period of time, that kinetic friction is slowing the linear velocity of the ball and increasing the angular velocity of the ball, it will, this criteria will be met and a ball will be rolling without slipping. So most of the time when you're rolling the balls, it, they're rolling without slipping. So why do I say this? Well, to reach the answer, I want you to kind of reach the answer by yourself. So if you have some ball nearby, try to pause the video and just roll it a couple times and see what you observe. Okay. 
Well, you should have observed two things. The one thing that you should have observed is that the linear velocity of the ball, once it's rolling without slipping, does not change, or it continues rolling with a pretty constant speed. In other words, the acceleration is zero. And the reason why you might have seen the ball slightly slow down is because of rolling friction or deformations in the ball, but because they have a pretty minimal effect, we ignore them in AP Physics 1. Okay, the other thing that you might have observed is that the ball does not continuously rotate faster and faster and faster until it stops moving. It reaches some rotational speed, and then it continues with that speed. It does not continue increase it, increasing its rotation forever. So, its angular acceleration is also zero. Okay, well, what am I getting at? Well, if the friction is the only force on the ball, and the acceleration is zero and the angular velocity is zero, well then, and by the only force I mean in the horizontal direction, because gravity and normal force act on the ball, but they are cancelled out, then the force of friction must be equal to zero. Well, how? How can the force of friction on the ball be equal to zero when it's moving to the right? Well, the first thing that we should know is that if there were force on the ball, a force of friction, it would be static friction. Because the bottom of the ball, when it is rolling without slipping, kind of by definition, is static with the ground. Okay, well, why is that important? Well, one thing about static friction is that it only acts as much as it needs to act. For example, if I just have a block on a surface and I'm not touching it, there's going to be no static friction on it. There's no reason for, there's nothing for the friction to oppose. There's no attempted motion. And if I push to the, at the block with one newtons of force to the left, the friction will simply do one newtons of force to the right. It's not going to do the maximum it can do, and it's not going to do zero. It's just going to do as much as it needs so that this block remains static with the surface. And what you might have realized by now is that when something is rolling without slipping, it's already static with the surface by the conditions of rolling without slipping. It's in some sort of equilibrium where the rotational velocity has cancelled out with the translational velocity, at least in the bottom, to make it roll without, to make the bottom of the ball not move compared to the surface. So friction, I kind of visualize it as looking, the friction looks at the ball, it's saying, okay, well, you're not moving, the bottom of the ball is not really moving relative to me, so why should I do any force? So it doesn't do any force, there's no need. It's already static relative to the surface. And that explains why when you roll a ball and you push a block, the ball continues rolling forever, basically, and the block stops rolling really, really quickly. And it also explains this angular acceleration phenomenon, that because there is no more friction acting on the ball, it's not going to angularly accelerate. There's no more torque acting on the ball. So it just kind of chills and continues going at it what it already was going at. Okay, and that's the, exp that's the explanation. I hope you got to the conclusion by yourself through this, through your own observations and your experiments, and I hope that you kind of understand why it happens. And I hope that this has cleared up this concept, which to me was very, very tricky. And thank you for watching the video.